The ratings are in for Saturday's episode of AW Collision. It's not good numbers for AW as they went head-to-head -head with the Money in the Bank premium live event from WWE. Rhea Ripley, interestingly, has been internally listed as a babyface following her return last night on Monday Night Raw. Tyler Bate undergoes surgery after an injury suffered last week on NXT. Finn Balor reveals he is signed for five more years with WWE. Joe Tessitore is announced as the latest member of the WWE broadcast team. We've got the ratings for Friday's edition of SmackDown as well as AEW Rampage. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about the ratings for AEW Collision this past weekend. Of course, the show went head-to-head -head with the Money in the Bank premium live event. So the expectations was that it wasn't going to be great numbers for All Elite Wrestling. And indeed, that has been the case. As I mentioned, when it goes head-to-head, -head, usually against PLEs, it doesn't tend to fare very well. Now, as I mentioned, going head-to-head -head with Money in the bank AEW collision experienced a ratings drop on Saturday night. The collision episode averaged 306,000 viewers on TNT down 27.5% from the previous week. It's the second lowest audience total the show has ever done on a Saturday night, ahead of only an episode from January 27 of this year that went head-to-head -head against the Royal Rumble. Collision drew a 0.08 rating in the 18-49 demographic. That's down 33.3% from last week and ties the second lowest rating the show has ever done, regardless of any day of the week. Again, beating only the January 27 episode, which did a 0.06. 0.06 in both overall viewership and the 1849 demo. Collision was uh, slightly below what AEW Rampage drew on Friday night. We'll talk about that in just a second. As compared to the same week in 2023, when there was no competition from WWE, Collision's overall audience was down 47.2% year over year, while its 1849 rating was down 61.9%. But as I mentioned, it must be stressed that this time last year they didn't go up against Money in the Bank in the t uh, in the same time slot as they did this past weekend. Now, in terms of the quarter hour ratings, these come courtesy of WrestleNomics, so shout out to them and be sure to subscribe to their Patreon service. And as you can see, as you would expect, Total viewership as well as the key 18 to 49 demographic is down significantly from the last 90 days trend with the show peaking at 382,000 viewers for the opening segment of the show. There was a slight rebound towards the penultimate segment of the show featuring Riho versus Lady Frost and also um, Samoa Joe's backstage promo, the beginning of Hangman Adam Page versus Jay White. Bit of an uptick to 294,000, but still, again, significantly lower than one would expect. That kind of reflects in the 18 to 49 demographic as well. The high point coming at the beginning of the show, the recap from Dynamite, the MJF live promo, which is not only when the most viewers were tuned in in terms of total viewership, but also the highest number when it came to the 18 to 49 demographic as well. The low points came in the segment that involved Claudio Castagnoli versus the Beast Mortis through picture-in-picture -picture ads. In the 18 to 49, it was a show low of just 87,000 viewers for a 0.07 rating at that period of time. Interestingly though, when you compare it to total viewership, the lowest moment of the show in total viewership came in the quarter hour that continued the Claudio versus the Beast Mortis match and some other backstage promos, the beginning of Riho versus Lady Frost, clocking in at 260 60,000 viewers. So what are your thoughts when it comes to the viewership? Again, is this what you expected? Did you expect better? Did you expect worse? Let me know your thoughts about it in the comment section below. Now, Rhea Ripley, a bit of an update on some strange internal listing for the former Women's World Champion. Now, Rhea Ripley, she is back on WWE television. And interestingly, she's back as a babyface. Now, an interesting update has emerged on WWE plans for Rhea Ripley amid rumors about the Judgment Day potentially breaking up. Ripley made a surprise return at the end of Monday's edition of Raw, confronting Dominic Mysterio and Women's World Champion Liv Morgan. While many fans were waiting for Ripley to return for a face off against Liv Morgan, there has been a lot of speculation about how Ripley will be presented moving forward. Interestingly, it appears that Ripley will be presented differently to the rest of the Judgment Day. Per PW Insider, Rhea Ripley is now internally listed as a babyface. The rest of the Judgment Day are reportedly listed as heels on the internal roster at the time of recording. 
Now, it has been heavily speculated that the Judgment Day will have an official split soon, with tensions teased between World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest and World Tag Team Champion Finn Balor. So what are your thoughts when it comes to future plans for the Judgment Day? What do you think is going to happen with them? Let me know your thoughts about that too in the comment section below. Now, Tyler Bate, we've got some confirmation on the injury and subsequent surgery that the WWE Superstar has been forced to undergo. WWE Superstar Tyler Bate has provided an update on his status, revealing that he has now had surgery after suffering an injury. With Pete Dunne competing in singles action on Monday's episode of Raw, it was mentioned on commentary that Tyler Bate will be out of action for a bit after suffering an injury during a match on last week's episode of NXT. Tyler Bate has now taken to Instagram to announce that he has now had surgery to fix a torn pectoral muscle and tendon. Sharing photos of himself in a hospital bed and in a sling, Bate captioned the post, quote, Tore my left pectoral major and tendon off the bone last week at NXT. Surgery yesterday was successful and all has been put back where it belongs. I'll be gone for some time while I recover. Try not to miss me too much. I'm in good spirits and looking forward to seeing you all again. Lots of love, big strong boy. Now, Pete Dunne shared Bate's post with his Instagram story. Several W superstars wish Bate well in the comments, including JD McDonough and Natalia. Bate and Dunn competed in a tag team match on the July 2nd episode of NXT, defeating Hank Walker and Tank Ledger after 11 minutes of action. Of course, if we get any more details when it comes to his recovery timeline or anything like that, we'll let you know in an upcoming video. And we spoke about the Judgment Day previously. Finn Balor, he's sticking around in WWE for five more years. After Finn Balor took to Instagram on April 23rd to announce that he ain't going nowhere, reports revealed that the Judgment Day member had signed a multi-year deal with WWE. Finn Balor has now revealed that he signed a contract extension for five years, meaning that his current deal will expire in 2029. Discussing his WWE future on What's the Story, Balor explained, quote, Yep, yeah, another extension for five years. I'm super excited. You never know. I remember when I was 20 and I was like, if I make it to 30, I'll be doing well. Then you're in your 40s and I'm like, shit, do they want to keep me doing this? Am I able to keep doing it? How is the body going to feel? We sat down, had a couple of conversations and the feelings were mutual. I wanted to stay. They wanted me to stay. We hashed out and I couldn't be happier. It was a weird time. It was six months to where my contract was coming up. Shit, is this the end of my run? Is it time for me to move on? 10 years is incredible. I lasted for six years in England and I thought, whatever I do, England is always going to be the biggest chapter of my career. Then I went to Japan for eight years. You lasted eight years in Japan. That's definitely going to be the main chunk of my career. Then I was just going to WWE to see what happens, maybe last two or three years, go back to Ireland or Japan. Now I'm 10 years with another five years to go. Fingers crossed they don't fire me. It's a pretty wild journey. Of course, Balor is currently in a World Tag Team Championship reign alongside JD McDonough on Monday Night Raw. Now, a big shakeup when it comes to commentary for WWE this summer. Following an earlier report from the New York Post, WWE have now officially confirmed that veteran sports commentator Joe Tessitore has joined the company and will begin on TV this summer. Tessitore, who currently works with ESPN and ABC, is known for his work covering college football and boxing and will now join the WWE commentary booth alongside SmackDown's Corey Graves and Wade Barrett, with Michael Cole and Pat McAfee remaining a pair on Monday Night Raw. While it is presumed that Tessitore will be working with Graves and Barrett on SmackDown, it was not specified in the announcement which brand the 53-year-old would be joining at this time. WWE Chief Content Officer Paul Triple H Levesque had the following to say regarding his arrival in the company, saying, Quote, whether it's a world title fight that's got the globe buzzing or a college football rivalry that's grabbed the nation's attention, Joe's voice provides that big event feel each time he's behind the microphone. We're excited for Joe to join legendary WWE lock broadcaster Michael Cole and our esteemed and announced team bringing his signature energy and meticulous preparation to our WWE telecast each week. Tessa Torre would also provide his first comments since joining WWE, calling the opportunity an honor. He said, quote, it's an honor to be a part of WWE. The recent success and trajectory are undeniable. Being there at WrestleMania 40, one could feel it. From Cody, Seth, Roman and The Rock to creative and production, these are some of the very best storytellers in TV. Corey and Wade are absolute stars and it is my privilege to join their team. Pat and Cole are just magical together and Cole is the greatest to ever sit in that chair. As a lifelong viewer, I'm humbled to join this team and serve our fans. So big changes coming when it comes to the broadcast teams later on this year. 
Now, also, we have the ratings for Friday's episode of SmackDown. And interestingly, there was no movement when it came to total viewership or the 18 to 49 demographic for the Money in the Bank Go Home episode on Fox. Now, according to WrestleNomics, SmackDown drew 2.256 million viewers on Fox and also brought in a 0.66 rating. Now, as I mentioned, this is exactly in line from last week's number. Last week's episode also drew 2.256 million viewers and also drew a 0.66 rating. As I mentioned, that means a 0% improvement when it comes to total viewership or the key 18 to 49 demographic. Now, some initially thought that there was this was an error and it was just the same numbers rolling over from the prior week but WrestleNomics have confirmed independently that this data is correct despite being exactly the same as the prior week smackdown in both the total viewership and the 18 to 49 demographic now the actual numbers of the viewers in the 18 to 49 for this week's episode was 867,000 and for last week it was 865,000 but due to rounding it's still considered the same 18 to 49 rating. Now as far as a competition note, ABC's interview with President Joe Biden aired against the first 33 minutes of Smackdown and averaged 8.578 million viewers so potentially that could be why the numbers remain flat but still against strong competition for the first half hour Smackdown did hold up fairly well so what are your thoughts on those numbers? Let me know your reaction to that in the comment section below now the quarter hour ratings they come courtesy of WrestleNomics shout out to them and be sure to subscribe to their Patreon service you can see right there um, the numbers and again it kind of dips below and comes back up and down what we've seen over the 90 day trend in terms of the 1849 number it's pretty much again in line with what you would expect so what are your thoughts on those numbers let me know your reaction to that too in the comment section below now, the ratings for AW Rampage on Friday. Of course, this was Rampage Beach Break. It aired from 10 to 11 p.m. on TNT. And according to WrestleNomics, the show drew 309,000 viewers and also drew a 0.10 rating. Now, in comparison to last week, it's a 2% rise in total viewership versus last week's 303,000 viewers. In terms of the 18 to 49 demographic, it's up 11% from last week's 0.09 rating. Of course, the show featured Mariah May advancing to the finals of the Women's Owen Hart Foundation. Cup tournament as well as several other matches. But there you go, guys. Lots of pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.